2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. All right. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So he's got something to say for people that's mean-mouthing him, saying, why, well, you ain't no apostle. You just brought that on yourself. You just trying to do... Do it through the flesh. No, Paul, Paul's got something to say to them. He says, we walk not in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're going to go through trials as a Christian man or woman. It's just the way it works. And I guarantee you, your first reaction is going to try to be to handle it yourself, to handle it through your own means that's what the natural man does he tries to take he tries to take point doesn't he but you'll soon find out and it takes a long time of doing and failing and doing this it's through the spirit that we overcome every single time the first man adam gets us in trouble the last adam take care of it doesn't he we need to learn to walk in that spirit because that's that's where the warfare is won through the spirit and you pull down strongholds of the enemy and you cast down imaginations it says every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and boy do we have those today and you need the spirit to be able to do that the mind of christ you may appear you may be a big a good debater and you can argue well but if you've not got the substance from within then your argument's no better than theirs. You've got to have the real deal. He says, we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's a big deal too because the devil, he likes sliding them little fiery darts, sneaking them past your shield of faith because you ain't got it up. And the warfare is in the mind. He says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but the weapons of warfare of the devil... They're very much in the mind. That's where the battle always starts. Yes, it spills out other places, but it starts in the mind. And if through the spirit, you can take captive all those thoughts, all those things that come and you take them captive by the obe obeying Christ, you can carry on. He says, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Yeah, you get fired up and you want to go out and, and fight the fight but you've not done what you're supposed to do yet kind of reminds me of uh why do you try to get the mite or the dust out of your your brother's eye when you've got a moat in yours take care of that first take care of what you've got to take care of then go out and get it done amen and the only way to take care of yourself is through jesus he says do ye look on things after the outward appearance if any man trust to himself that he is christ's let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. And that's a problem too. Even, even if you get spiritual and you get the Holy Ghost and you got Christ living in you, still so many times you want to jump out ahead in a selfish way that you really think that, you know, you're the only game in town. You're the only one doing anything when you're not. That reminds me of, Old Elijah, you know, a man that could call down fire, yet one little skinny woman calls for his head and he takes off running. Lord, I'm the only one left that killed all your prophets. Now they're coming after me. No, I got 7,000 who ain't bent the, nail, the knee to bail yet. And, uh, so there's that. I know I'm kind of juking all over the place here on you, but we'll continue. It says, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification. That's what it's all about, building up the church, building up the body. And not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters, say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily appearance is weak and his speech contemptible. That's what people say. They think he's going to get there and be this little frail, mean-mouthed man. He says, no, let such a one think this, that 
such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. He's coming to take care of business, isn't he? For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. You get that all throughout just being human. I really think that's why most people still try to cling to the law. They like that in that there was, there was a, a set list of stuff to do and not to do. And you can take that list and the things you could do, you could put out in bright, bold face font and all this stuff you didn't like doing, you hide that away. But you could take your list and compare it with somebody else's list and say, well, I've outdone you. That's why people like the law, because it's of the self and it's weak in the flesh. But Paul says the people that do this stuff that's comparing themselves with others, it says you are not wise. But we will not boast of our of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. It just keeps branching out, just keeps taking the gospel further. He says, not boasting of things without measure, without our measure, that is of other men's labors. But having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. When they get it and they start growing, that, en that enlarges the ones that gave it to them. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, that you keep going, that you keep taking the message out, that we keep, you know, getting it out there. He says, uh, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glories, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. Not he that commends himself. A lot of people, I know I've dealt with that a lot about the self in this chapter. I think that's what I get out of this. People that are commending themselves and comparing themselves and wanting this themselves. No. Glory in the Lord, and it's who the Lord commands that's got the, that's the real deal. And who the Lord commands, you don't have to go out bragging, you don't have to go out boasting. God will take care of it all. Amen. And that's it for that one. See you next time.